Hey, welcome back to the Made for More Consulting Podcast. This is episode 49, and you're in for an interview today. So I uh, just want to say it's going to be a great episode. This is an interview we've been, we've been waiting on for a little bit. Uh, you've heard a lot about this guy. Uh, he's a good friend, uh, works with me. <clears throat> Got to know him a, little, uh, a few years back. But before we get into that, um, Adina is not going to be with us tonight. Um, she uh, decided to avoid the distractions and interruptions that would happen today. I don't think she wants her, her reputation on the line <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, guys, if this is your first episode that you've listened, uh, go back and listen to episode number one. Uh, you find out a little bit about Made For More. Uh, the other thing is episode 27, it, or it's titled Adina Calls the Shots. That's also an update on where we're at. But yeah, episode 49, we had, we're gonna hit 50 this year. Um, it's going to be excellent, um, and we just wrapped up uh, Start With Why, and also The Lowdown. We've been hearing some amazing reports on The Lowdown, so make sure that you go back and listen to those. They're, they're released every Thursday, straight to the point, leadership and development. So, um, yeah, just make sure you, you check those out. <clears throat> so, um, without further ado... I gotta interview my, I mean, I gotta introduce my guest. Um, you've already missed a lot of the uh, the pre shenanigans. Well, we may talk about that, but. We might. We might. It's, that's uh, a guarantee. Uh, You're gonna wanna stick around. Yeah, so. Don't wanna miss this one. This guy has uh, won, you've won multiple barbecue contests, been in New York, yeah. dressed like Jesus. Yep. Um, stories uh and has had a couple of different um nicknames given by us yeah you know. um and <laughs> has been approached on multiple occasions by that by those nicknames um so <clears throat> i'll have to introduce him with both nicknames okay first his first nickname was uh welcome to the show John, the common denominator, douchebag evans however <laughs> the next the newest one is John Bang Bang Evans. Bro, welcome to the show, hey, man. thanks for having me. That just, that's a great introduction. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure people's curiosity is already peaking. And <laughs> this is going to be the most listened to show, dude. Or least. <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. There's no middle ground with this one. So, uh, before the show, yeah. before anyone got to hear yeah. what we just said, um, we discussed pre-show meals. We were. We and were I had we were testing the brand mic. chili. Yeah, you were getting the red line on the EQs over here because you're just letting it rip <laughs> your own brand burps over there. <laughs> yeah, and we just, thought, hey, let's just, uh, before the podcast, eat the most difficult thing to digest. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have to eat? I had a uh, QT. QT, uh, explain yeah, what QT yeah, is for QT, some people. Quick trip. Okay. It's a it's, it's a convenience store on the side of every every intersection in they're, Texas. They're changing the game. Though. They are, bro. Yeah. But it's still a it's still a it's like a Seven Eleven. So it's what better you than Seven Eleven. Yes, but the food. Well, yeah, I'm just and we need to make sure we're representing QT. Uh, yeah, QT. <laughs> they do have every do. every uh, brand of uh, Blue Bell ice cream, which is legit. Yeah, like you can order ice. food back there. Yep. You know, you can they go make get sandwiches like forty nine cent ice cream cones for the kids. So what did you end up? So, you know, the little turnies that have, like, the <laughs> hot dogs cooking on there. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they've got a couple different options. They've got the egg roll. They've got, like, a buffalo chicken. <laughs> and, then, and then they have this. It's like a, it's like a wannabe fried burrito for, for what you yeah. introduced me to out, out west. west. Out west. Out west, yeah. But it's, like, east, okay? Yeah. So we're not west anymore. And yeah. so they've got these turning steak and cheese like, I don't need the chimichanga things. Chimichanga. This one's pretty good. Next yeah. time you're at the QT, get two of those and a Red Bull and go, go, go do a podcast. Nice. Um, so you're being given directions to hand over whatever you have to hand. That was um, my fidget tool. Uh, <laughs> so a year ago, bro, we went hunting on a trip for your birthday. We did. And uh, we had an interesting experience with another guy that we interviewed. We are not allowed to say his nickname because oh, we would probably get arrested. <laughs> um, and he'd probably be on a on a on a, on a list to be searched. Watched. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but we a year ago, Jay and I, and you went hunting out west Texas at one of, one of the ranches that Jamie's family owns, and we didn't get anything. Jay, 
You missed the bobcat. And Jay, the shot, water tank. Jay shot the water tank about seven times <laughs> and said, I saw the blood fly up. He's like, bro, this yeah. is the water tank you shot. That my father in law said, You can do anything, but don't shoot the water tank. <laughs> you put so, the feeder right next yeah. to the water tank. But I was, I had a clear shot, and he was like, Here, let me let shoot. Me do it. Yeah. Let me miss. Seven times. <laughs> we stayed out there forever in the freezing cold. Well, well, dude, it's so fun to like post up, find a spot overlooking. Like an open area, you get that call going. That call cracks me up, by the way. Yeah, that it's, call a, it's, a, it's a dying like jackrabbit mm -hmm. noise. If you, it calls in the varmints, and yeah. you just watch those scopes for mm -hmm. anything moving, and yeah. then you got to decide, okay, can I shoot this? Like, yeah. just make sure this is a shootable. I know, dude. Because one time, at one point, we saw, uh, I think a baby deer, and we we're like, yeah, don't shoot that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Jay was like, I don't think that's a guy. <laughs> that's a deer. I was like, well, they all look the same through the scope. That's so fun though. Yeah, dude, it was fun. Um, we had, went up looking for rattlesnakes, found a black widow. Mm -hmm. um, didn't find much, but <clears throat> dude, welcome to the show, man. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. How long have we known each other, man? Five years now. Yeah. Can you? If, I would say really three, because it took you two years to finally come around. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah. I didn't I think, trust you. Yeah. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first time I saw John, he walked into our office. And you, I still say you had wavy hair, and I was like, who's this guy? I mean, there are some locks a little You do have a mullet now. Yeah, I do. For those of y'all that want to go check out uh, YouTube, um, <laughs> John Evans, John Bang Bang Evans, I mean, Don't out waste your time. <laughs> I, well, I mean, do for the sake of the show, but not for me. Okay. I mean, come on. So, dude, <laughs> let's, nice. let's, you have a wife, kids? Let's, uh, I do. I have a wife and four children. What are their names for their ages, man? Okay. Well, we got. Are we allowed to sit down? Yeah. Here? Allie and uh, my oldest is Jackson, and then Tyler, and then Ashlyn, and Luke. So I got two boys, a girl, and a boy, and seventh grade, sixth grade, fourth grade, and kindergarten. Nice, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Born and raised in Austin, right? All of them. Yeah, I met Probably I, you. Well, not born and raised in Austin. Uh, well, all the right. kids are. Allie and I, I moved here middle school, and then I met my wife in high school, Westlake High School down in West Austin, the Mighty Chaparrales. They have a pretty good football program, is what yeah. I hear. Yeah, Drew Brees, and and Justin Tucker. Sam Ellinger, right? Yeah, but and Sam Ellinger and uh, Nick Foles. Nick Foles. And then some linemen and stuff. It's cool. Pretty yeah. cool. Having Was a, Baker there? He went to Lake Travis, like right? The, right? The, the, uh, yeah, the rival. The rival. Yep. And Garrett Gilbert was a quarterback <clears throat> yeah. there. And we don't talk about Garrett Gilbert on the podcast, <laughs> but he was the big worst Texas quarterback. Anyways, well, keep going. From Lake Travis, so. But yeah, we <laughs> met in high school, and uh, yeah, we... I got here in middle school, and we've been here ever since. We left for a little while to go up to Colorado Springs, just by the Air Force Base, to finish college, and moved you went, back after. You went college. to college where? Uh, well, all over the place. I went to UT, <laughs> and then I made like the merry-go-round of Austin Community Colleges, <laughs> and yeah. I went to St. Edwards for a year. Yeah. And I didn't know clearly. I didn't know what I was doing, but we decided to wrap up our degree at Colorado Christian University up in. Colorado nice. moved away and had an adventure up there and came straight back. Yeah. Started family. Where were you born? Lansing, Michigan. Really? Yeah. Why didn't I know that? Yeah. Dang, dude. My and you family. just had a birthday. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a year ago, like I said, we were out hunting. Um, <clears throat> Lansing, Michigan? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, my, my whole family, like my parents, parents, and everybody was, all my, my family's from Michigan, but as soon as I was born, we moved. And so the whole family relocated here. Right, and year one of four, four. Yeah. three, yeah. well, three now. Yeah, we can talk about that at some okay. point. Um, okay, what did you study in college, dude? Man, I jumped all over the place. Liberal arts, right off the bat, because I felt like, okay, since I don't know what I'm doing, that's like the catch-all for people who don't know what they're doing in college. Like, ah, liberal arts, what does that mean? I don't know. I just want to go to college. Yeah. And then uh, I did like the thing in community college where I just wanted to try to figure out like, okay, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. It was like, I, I actually took a marine biology class because I saw as a kid, like the reading rainbow episode where they like <laughs> <laughs> went to the ocean yeah, yeah. and like looked at yeah. the animals. I thought maybe I want to be a marine biologist. So I'm at the community college, perfect yeah. place to take a marine biology class. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. I did metal sculpture for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Okay. Um, that's awesome. And then art, I did art for a while, yeah. and then dropped out of college. I was like, clearly, when you get metal sculpture, marine biology, <laughs> it's like take a break. Like think, think about this. But my my dad was like, okay, listen, you, you got to finish this. Like yeah. you're going nowhere quick. Like get yeah. with it. And right about that time, um, Allie was interested in like going to like a 
like a Bible institute. We are at this church where they were like promoting, oh, get a yeah, degree yeah. through the church. Which <laughs> I did, it made no sense to me. And uh, I wanted to finish at a university, so we kind of split the difference. My yeah. sister was living in Colorado Springs, <clears> and we saw that Colorado Christian University, we went and visited her. Mm -hmm. We stopped by the university and talked with the council, and we're like, this is legit. So when I went there, I looked at the classes they offered. <clears throat> there was like a sociology class, which was really cool. I'm into yeah. like, you know, group behavior, group, yeah. group org. And then there was like a nonprofit class and then biblical studies. And then, I mean, it all kind of worked together to create a degree called organizational management. I thought, okay, that's sort of like the liberal arts. I don't know what it means, but it sounds like it would cover a lot of <laughs> yeah, yeah. bases. Yeah, yeah. And so organizational management, that's what I cool. finished with. Nice, and then you moved back to Austin. Moved back to Austin, we were there for a little bit. And then you got a uh, job. Yep. I mean, you, you, you worked a couple of different places. I came back and my parents were involved at a church in Northwest Austin, it was a big church. Yeah. And uh, they had just said, hey, my son's graduating because they had heard the youth pastor was leaving there. Mm -hmm. And so I got on the phone with, they got me on a phone call with the pastor and then we talked. He said, come on down. He just hired me and I started working as a youth pastor in Austin for, nice. I ended up working there for nine years. And Dang, man. I've been at Rock Point for the past five years. Yeah, so uh, somewhere in there you worked for Starbucks. I did, yeah. 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 <laughs> what was that all about, dude? What? So, okay, so I had a friend named Norm, <clears throat> we loved Norm, if you knew him, Is he we were all custom, like? very similar, I'm, I, at this point in time I don't know his location. <laughs> Is this one of the guys that you... He was part of the wolf pack. With the, with the, <laughs> the Dr. Wolf Pepper? <laughs> the Dr. Pepper? If you were a uh, bicyclist in 1990, what, what year was that that you threw the Dr. Pepper at a bicyclist? <laughs> That happened, yeah, no one was present when I recorded or found the drink on the cyclist. Oh, we were driving. Oh my gosh. Gosh, we just oh. lost like five listeners. I'm sure. Dude, just come on, bro. We're, they're laughing with us. That's not even, I mean, we're going to get into some serious stuff, but go ahead. So, uh, Starbucks, the, Norm. Yeah, so Norm was working there, and the Starbucks had just introduced like the Chrome Frappuccino. Yeah. And I was like, that was the big thing. Like, Starbucks only had like three things at the menu, on their menu at the time. Yeah. That's how old I am. And, and so he's like, he was the dude that would give away everything. Like he worked yeah. at a oh, yogurt, TCBY. Yeah, you go in there, he'd let you bring your own like five gallon bucket and like just, and he's not the guy you want to hire. Yeah. He's giving away the store. Yeah. So I went into Starbucks and he gave me a caramel frappuccino at the time. I thought, man, this is really good. So I was driving, I was in college. I was like just starting college and I, I at this point in time, didn't need a job. I already yeah. think I needed a job <laughs> until I got pulled over by the cops. Yeah. And I complained about it <clears throat> to my dad. Yeah. I was like, yeah, because I thought if I complained enough, he'd be like, oh, let me just pay for it. Yeah. And no, he wasn't playing that game. He's <laughs> like, well, sounds like you're going to go to jail if you can't get it paid off. I'm like, slam the door harder because he said that. You yeah. Know? But then I just drove up and saw Norm, and I was like, dude, I just died. I need to make some money. Yeah. And Norm was like, Dude, come give away free frappuccinos with me at Starbucks to all our friends. Dang, dude. And I ended up working there for like nine years. That's awesome, too, man. Customer service side of that. And I mean, you and I have talked about Starbucks and their high quality training and, yeah. you know, professionalism. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool, dude. Um, and we'll get into some of the leadership side of all of this here in a second uh, before we, I mean, we can keep keep laughing. But uh, Norm, I mean, the Wolfpack, we, you and I have talked about the Wolfpack. And some of the people you've known over time that have made it like huge. Like when I say huge, <laughs> I'm talking like they're known all over the world. Yeah, and oh yeah. and the, the, the common denominator, <laughs> John Evans, knows them. I mean, you know yeah. the Yeti owners? Yeah. Yeti yeah. brothers? One yeah, one of them. I know both of them, but I know one of them really well. Yeah, and then the people that did uh, Cobra, mm -hmm. Chameleon Cobra. Chameleon Cobra, owner. Nestle, Cobra. right? Yeah. Nestle picked them up yeah. and just bought them out. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> that's insane and then uh, you did uh, you were a part of the Holy Smokers mm -hmm. which was a barbecue sauce yeah and you dressed like Jesus mm -hmm. and then you won, went all the way to New York and won what, what was that <clears throat> where, where do you want me to like, start with that well let, just tell me what you won like you you went and you competed against all these other yeah. was it barbecues yeah okay yeah so I mean, I, I mean this could open a can of worms I mean, we let's let's hold off on the worms. I'm just telling you, <laughs> oh, I got worms. Yeah. <laughs> I've got worms for you, bro. Um, so, <laughs> you let me know. You worked at that, at that church for nine years. Came over to Rock Point, 
and um, dude, the way we were, the way we met was the most awkward, interesting <laughs> yeah, uh, experience for, for all of us. Very awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got invited to one of our staff parties. Yeah, and you were the odd man out because we were like, "Hey, who is this guy?" Yeah, like the Rock Point staff families. It's a it's a tight knit group. Yeah, it's you know, yeah. and it's like <clears throat> I mean, say family because we treat it like family. Yes. And so I didn't know any of this, <laughs> and I was interested in being a part of the family, or yeah. I didn't even know staff. it was family at yeah. the time. I want to come work on staff. And I got, I just, hey, come on over to the house. We'll just, you know, I thought this is a good way for us to connect. Yeah, come on over. We'll down there. Yeah. What do you want me to bring? Yeah. Well, little did I know, the staff was also coming over to the yeah. house. And we and rolled so up and said. I didn't know the staff was going to be there. We the didn't staff know we... didn't know I was going to be yeah. there. And it was like, I was the guy knowing everybody was saying, oh, who is this guy? <laughs> Who's this weirdo <laughs> with walking around our staff party room? Yeah, I just said, hey, who is this dude? Yeah, he's exactly. talking about fishing, and well, that, and you were showing me some, some yeah. cool. And that's yeah. the other thing about you is you're you're a big fisherman. You're really good. <clears throat> we got into some fun conversation about that. Yeah, I think you and I are the only people on this earth that have got stuck in a boat with the uh, <laughs> what was it? The, anchor like, down. Anchor down, thinking that it wasn't down, and we were both, or you were rowing. I was as rowing fast pretty hard. I thought, like, yeah, we, were, we, we thought we were. I thought we were bottomed out on the. Like there was some grass near the yeah, bottom of the boat. Yeah. I'm like, dude, we're bottoming out. And I was just you're just rolling, bro. And then there was a dude watching us, filming, filming us. us, going nowhere. And he goes, "They're stuck." And then I looked over, and the anchor was down. And you're like, "Yeah, I was like, bro, what the hell, are you doing, man? Take the anchor out." Anyways, so you get hired with us, man. Uh, um, at some point, Jay can tell everyone else how he met you at that. <laughs> you said that you you serenaded yes. him. And I did you took his shirt off in front of me. First time ever. I, I, that didn't happen either. Every story gets like hey, out Jay of control. Said that, man. Jay said that. What he did say is like, man, the first time I met you, it was like I just felt like it was like, man, this guy really wants to know me. Like, yeah. Too much too soon. <laughs> yeah. But we. Um, yeah. That's cool, man. <laughs> it was pretty hot and yeah. sweaty. Yeah, we had to go for a walk. I didn't walk. I didn't take that walk with y'all. Um, but yeah, it took us a little bit to get connected because I was at a different location. And then um, you and I started uh, recording some live videos, three guys in a, in a yeah. Jeep or a hatchback. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we did live videos with one of our buddies, Derek. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we're, we're, I mean, this is just it. And I will tell people that... Um, if they pay the right price, I can re I can release a word document with everything that you've ever said <laughs> that comes across um, way worse than it actually is. <laughs> yes, I, I mean you you say things sometimes in staff meetings that I go, does he realize what he just said? And so I write it down. There's like one through fifty or sixty. Johnisms. Johnisms is what it is, and uh, I'll just sometimes say, hey, hey, so pick a number. Pick a number one through sixty, and they'll pick a number. And you, you can go back to the time and place I can't. when you said that. I can't, because when you say it and you start laughing, I have to clarify, like, yeah, no, it, that is not what it meant. <laughs> we were talking about 18-wheeler driving by. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> so, dude, real quick, on the topic of, you know, motivate, inspire, and encourage, your, um, who are some people, as you grew up, that you looked up to as far as, like, uh, role models? And I, I know we've all walked through our realm of, um, when we were jacked up and we were like <clears throat> not following the things that we needed to do. I mean, we've talked about that, but like when you go, hey, this is who I kind of, this is cool. This is who I'd like to model myself after, or this is who I've listened to. Who are some of those people, man? Yeah. <clears throat> man, uh, right off the bat, you know, I think the first answer would be like going to some somebody in a book or, yeah, yeah. you know, somebody in a church. And I, I mean, right. Right off the bat, it has to be my dad. Yeah, I mean, it still is. Yeah. Um, just, just the way that, and, and my mom too. But yeah. just the way that he's lived his life professionally through his career and how it's played out at home. You know, I, as a kid, you know, I, I watched him. You know, yeah, yeah. And then we would get in a lot of conversations about about anything and everything. And he was a, a man who I could go to, who I felt like he trusted me. I I trust him. And, 
And so we just had that open father-son relationship. And then when I would see what he would do during the day, you know, mm-hmm. for the past, man, he's been working a long time, still doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, he helps. Like, over the years, he's helped over hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And just through his work. Without, I, I work at a church, so then I, I do it, like, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But he does it, you know, he's, yeah. he's like undercover. He, he's just changing people's lives without having to use yeah. the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he seems like a busy dude. And he's always checking on you and making sure you're good. And then your mom, she's an author too. Yeah, Christian book author. I think she's got like 24 books published. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I'm growing up. Man, ever, was, ever, did you ever feel a pressure from them to follow that? No. That's what's cool. That's what I've gathered from you too, is just the, there was never pressure. I mean, I think probably the pressure to, to choose a career, mm-hmm. but not, hey, you need to you know, do this. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can speak to that, but. No, I mean, sometimes, you know, my dad challenges of the fact that I work at a church. I mean, he, mm-hmm. you know, and I think he comes back to being proud of me doing that, and he's mm-hmm. good with it. But yeah. I think sometimes he's like, man, you know, come do this other job over here, make this more money, mm-hmm. and, you know, have all the benefits, all the things. Yeah. And But then he comes back to like, man, I'm proud of what you're doing, and keep up the good work. No doubt. Yeah. So what did you believe <clears throat> as far as leadership, man? Like, I know because you and I sometimes have these conversations of going, man, I didn't, this isn't, I mean, we, we think of, we talk about leadership, we're like, man, this is, we're, we're pretty, we're in a, we're in an environment where leadership is huge. Yeah. And sometimes well, that's said, it. that's interesting. That, well, I think it's interesting to see how I've grown over the years mm-hmm. because, and it's interesting that you have, you're having me on this show. I, I feel that way <clears throat> because I'm like, I ain't, I don't run no book and I don't, you know, I don't have another podcast or like, yeah. You sure you want to use your 49th episode here <laughs> like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> i i'm not i say that because like growing up i spent time church in church leadership's talked about a lot mm-hmm. just over the years i grew up in that environment my parents made me go to church yeah. so the topic of conversation i don't know why but yeah. when with, when leadership came up it just bugged me yeah it just did it made me feel like i, I wasn't a part of the conversation so then i always felt like a bad leader <laughs> But but yeah. really, the first time I really felt like leadership started kicking in in my life was right around the time I was going into high school, yeah. where it started to become something that um, I had to think about it for myself. And I remember I have a buddy. He still knows me. We're friends today. He was the best man at my wedding. I My freshman year, I was doing marching band which socially for me play, at the bro? time. What well, did you play? <laughs> Please tell me it's not the flute. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool if I did, actually. Okay, go ahead. That's an underrated <laughs> The flute? Well, I mean, have you heard some of that 70s music with the flutes? The jazz flute? The, the jazz flute. Um, what's his name? Played? Yeah, that's what uh, I'm talking about. Anchorman. So, no, I, I played... Oh, gosh, it's hard to say this out loud. <laughs> you might as well admit it. First step is I played, getting under I played, I played the tuba. Okay. That, it's so That's fitting. It is. It is it's, it's great, though. Big to, all, to, play. to all the band people out there, I love you. I get it. I've been there. I've done that. Love you. Did you march? Is that what you I did? did? Okay, go ahead. I was struggling <laughs> doing this. Like, I was. Okay. No, no, okay. Struggling marching or struggling playing? Socially. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. It was formative. Yeah. It helped yeah, me learn yeah, about yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you know, there, you deal with a certain different kind of pressure oh, on yeah. the marching band. I bet. And I have a lot of respect for people who stuck with it, and I just felt like I got tired of people saying things. <laughs> and people didn't really ever give me a hard time, really. Yeah. I, I had a lot yeah. of, like, just friends. I never really had, never really ever bullied me. Yeah. But my friends would say stuff. <laughs> like you do. You yeah. know? Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, it's like, after I expect, you know? And it's okay. I can, I can play that game. Yeah. But in the middle of the commons at Westlake High School, so, uh, but I said, I have this friend and I told him I like my struggle. Mm-hmm. And he said something to me that sometimes really still yeah. resonates with me yeah. today. He said to me, like, I was like, I, I'm ready to quit, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. Yeah. And he said, well, stick with it, at least finish the year. And he said, because doing things you don't want to do, it builds character. Yeah. No and doubt. you know what? There was a lot of truth in that sentence that I yeah. wanted to quit, but I, I finished the year. Yeah. And, um, that's good. And so that kind of was uh, made me think like that was a good leadership principle right there, and then I made a 
choice to quit the band and I joined the lacrosse team. And I played lacrosse in high school and I played for a year in college at yeah. St. Edwards University. And that was interesting because I became a team captain in my mm -hmm. senior year, like my junior year, I was a team captain, one of three of yeah. the captains. And my senior year, I was one of three of the captains, but the the captain mm -hmm. and the team MVP, That's all, awesome. all district, all state. And I wasn't like the most vocal. Well, I was very vocal on the field because mm -hmm. you have to be a vocal leader on defense. Mm -hmm. If I would play goalie, and you have to tell your defense where to position, what to do, and right, you're yeah, directing, yeah. you're like the quarterback, you're telling, you're directing the defense. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> the fact that my coach saw that and he put me in a position to kind of perpetuate that. That's cool. Um, built built some confidence, and it also built leadership. And it, I think, the more he affirmed that, the yeah. more I stepped into that. That's good, man. So, do you think that you still that you said it still resonates with you? So, do you think that still echoes? And I mean, because you and I have talked about certain things, and sometimes it's easier just to quit. But we haven't. I mean, I'm saying our job. I'm saying like as in anything that you and I. Have started like man is this what's going on in life like it, what i mean every now and then when we're in the same office we'll go it's the same question all the time sometimes like, what are we doing yeah, yeah. well i think <clears throat> i think sometimes things you're not getting to an arrival point that you don't yeah. for yeah. maybe it's the way you feel about it or yeah. maybe there's a certain level of like return on the investment that you're mm -hmm. you hope to have had achieved at a certain point yeah or you you hit a time where it's like not fun anymore or it's like man this you start questioning things and I think that yeah that still resonates with me of like you know sometimes you gotta stick with it yeah and when you push through th those are moments for you know a fork in the road yeah to say okay is it time okay I need to go or am I do I need to push through this to kind of have that yeah breakthrough That's and good. when you go through those hardships and you stick with things uh, that you don't want to stick with mm -hmm. man there's something on the other side that you got to push through to get that's good, dude. That's real good. That's good to know. Um, <clears throat> so you and I knowing each other, um, talk about, uh, so we, I mean, we're talking about leadership, but talk about, you know, you, you, I'm, one of the reasons I'm with Slab Barbecue is because you introduced me to Mark. Um, so not only do you know Mark and Raph, the guys, uh, the owners of Slab, but, um, I mean, tell, tell us about the, the Chameleon Cold Brew. I mean, because they made it big. Yeah. You know, I mean, you pretty much. I mean, that, I, man, that that ties into that <clears throat> Holy Smoker story. That's yeah. that's connected. Um, so when I was working at Starbucks, so that's a weird thing. You know, I think that you can see that maybe even part of the conversation of pushing through times of hardship, sticking with it, builds character, does provide an opportunity for you said to me like a thin red line. Yeah, the thread, the pull the thread and everything. Yeah. Um, because when I look at the, like parts of my story, had I not stuck with things, mm -hmm. the way things played out wouldn't have played out. Yeah. So <clears throat> when I was working at my last church, um, I was also part-time working when I first started at Starbucks still. Yeah. And I was like just about to be done. And there was this dude that was coming in pretty regularly and he ordered the same drink every time. So like I knew when he was coming in, I was already making his drink at like handed yeah, drink yeah. at the bar. And he came in one day and he was like, Man, I'm gonna I'm leaving. And he worked across the street and he like told me he was leaving, so it was a little bit like awkward because I didn't even hardly know his name and and uh he was my age and he's you know, I just you know working across the street and saying, Dude, I uh, just sold everything and I got this R V and I'm gonna go on this like road trip, it's gonna be epic and I was like, dude, have fun. And he hit me up like a couple months later on Facebook, yeah. found me on Messenger, and was like, hey, do you want to get coffee when I get back? Like, I got some stuff I just need to talk about. And I was like, I, yeah. But I didn't even really, and he knew yeah. that I was working at a church, but he said, I, I'd be good to talk about these things. So we started meeting once a month, and he started his own business, a marketing company in Austin. And he started marketing a product. He's like, dude, I gotta tell you about this product. I can't really talk about it yet, but it's a cold brew. It goes in this like elixir looking old medicine bottle. And we, we made the label, it's looking awesome. And it's gonna be called Chameleon Cold Brew. And so I remember <clears throat> they put like a social media post out that they had just put some on the shelves at a place down by Barton Springs, downtown yeah, Austin. Austin yeah. 
<clears throat> and I went down there and I went to the re refrigerator, I got a bottle of it, and I, I just drank it straight from the bottle. And I took a picture and I was like, dude, congratulations, awesome product, yeah. really good, love it, awesome dude. And then I followed them on Facebook. So then like a couple months later, I see that this Chameleon Cold Brew posted this event on their page and said, if you use our coffee in an ingredient during South by Southwest for amateur cook-off, we'll give you extra money. And I was yeah. like, okay, so I started clicking around. And next thing I knew, I was reading about this cook-off. Yeah. So I had this, this weird connection with all these people at this point that I didn't know how it was going to play out. Yeah. And I hear my buddy, that one of my coworkers coming up the stairs, crazy guy. He goes by the name of Flying Salmon, his name's Nate. Nate. And I call him over and I say, dude, check this out. And he's like, well, I'm like, what is this? And I was like, well, this is a amateur cook-off. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'm like, so what? And I was like, okay, well, here's the deal. Um, he had just shared this story with me the day before. Yeah. And him and four of the guys, before I came to work with him, they went out and they were hanging out and they were downtown Austin and these four dudes came up with this question of what's the craziest thing we could do tonight without getting arrested? And so they ended up, they ended up, uh, MTV Real World was filming in downtown Austin on 6th Street and they had this house yeah. and it had a pool in the house and oh, they, they yeah, had just, about this. they had remember. just turned it over into a, like a five star fine dining, it, it might be like Vince Young Steakhouse now. Yeah. But they, that pool was still in the steakhouse. And what they decided they were going to do is the dude, one of the dudes had his scuba gear in his truck, <laughs> in his Jeep. And they stopped by, the, the, another one was wearing um, like these like smiley face boxers. Oh. And so what they decided they were going to do was have a swimming competition in that pool, in that fine dining restaurant. Oh. And so they're walking up to this fine dining restaurant, one in their scuba gear, the other one's wearing like a, a robe with smiley face boxers and a shower cap and a, like a loofah sponge. Yeah, and the other guy had a, um, oh my he had a, uh, a referee <laughs> like top. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they're walking in and they're getting ready to go. They had this envision that they were going to jump in the water and start racing and blow a whistle. And yeah. Their bouncer comes walking up to the door and goes, I don't know what you guys are about to do, but whatever you're about to do, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and so like they called it so Nate comes up the stairs and I'm like feeling like I missed out I'm like yeah. gosh if I could have just been there that night yeah 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 it would have succeeded yeah we yeah. would have gotten a race in I'm sure yeah but I said okay there's a cook-off happening with this product called Chameleon Cold Brew yeah and we started reading it and I said to him let's enter this competition but not like as ourselves as like an alter ego as like a, a like character so let's not be ourselves Let's hijack this event. Oh my gosh. And he said, I like where you're going with this. <laughs> He's like, I am. <laughs> and so we raid the, the kids' wardrobe closet up, in the, up in the church. Oh and we get gosh. the disciple outfits out, the sackcloth robes, and the, yeah, yeah. you know, all the things. Is this the picture of you pouring? Well, so, your body? well, not yet. Not, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were late to, to say this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the picture where you're so, we enter this competition and we fill out the application with more questions and answers. Like when you read a question, we're answering it with a question. Yes. And we enter as the holy smokers and immediately they get back to us and they're like, we don't know who you guys are, what you're doing, but we want you in this event. And so <laughs> it's during South by Southwest mm -hmm. and uh, we get invited to this party down on, on uh, the, ginger, the gingerbread man, mm -hmm. this cool yeah, yeah. little bar. And yes. so, and so, what we decided to do is we print off these signs that we wear around our neck that say, "The Holy Smokers." In in observance of the competition, the Holy Smokers have taken a vow of silence. So we're walking through this bar, like super goofy, like dressed like Jesus, or you know, like a disciple. We've got this sign around our neck, and people are loving it. They're like, "This is why we love South by Southwest." You never know, we, Jesus is going to walk in the door. And so we go, we go over to. This event was created by these two dudes who were a part of Brooklyn, Brooklyn Brewery up in New York. And what they did one night is they had a special reserve beer. They drank too much of it. It was two in the morning. And they get into a full-on argument about who could cook the better grilled cheese. And so 
they start having their own little cook-off. Mm -hmm. And they decided to have what's called the food experiment, which they decided, let's have a cook-off where we choose an ingredient, and you gotta use that ingredient to make whatever dish you want to make the most perfect bite you can make. So we enter this competition and we we smoke some pulled pork and we make some I gotta make it for you sometime. It's called Thai chili bacon candy. It's amazing. I gotta make Thai it. Thai chili bacon candy. Mm -hmm. Bro, you know I'm picky about what I eat. It's really good. It, it's I mean it, okay. so we get going and we are it's smacked out in the middle of this event. A couple hundred people are there. It's they got a live DJ spinning, you know, the energy's there, yeah. Brooklyn Brewery's there, people are drinking, people are eating, it's happening. And yeah. we're like, I'm getting in people's faces, I'm like making a scene. Yeah. And dressed as, dressed as, as Jesus. 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 Yeah. Jesus. Connecting with people. It had very little to do with the food. I was yeah. all a distraction it was a on the food. Yeah. Because the food was good, but we wanted to like you were do something different. Yeah. So next thing I know, we're right. arts. so I look Liberal over Liberal. and I see the owners of Brooklyn Brewery and the guys at this event, they're looking over their shoulder and they're like talking across the way pointing at us and I look at Nate and I said to him, let's get out of here. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, dude, they're talking about us and I don't like where this is going because I think this is going in a positive direction. <laughs> and he goes, dude, get your head in the game. Like, let's go, we're finished strong. And so we finished this event and we're up on the stage and they announced the winners and they said that we won this thing. Oh my gosh. And so it was a really weird kind of full circle of like this dude, who, he was there, the, the marketing guy. Yeah. Who made the cold, the cold brew and the cold brew guys were there. And then they hand us like the first prize was just a bunch of the cold brews. So I, yeah. I, I just take the tops off of that cold brew <laughs> and I start pouring it all over myself <laughs> like a NASCAR winner with champagne yeah. beer. Yeah. Now, we'll, we'll which release that picture. I highly like. I'm just discouraged pouring <laughs> sticky tea. Pouring, well, it was cold brew. It just like tea. Yeah. But it burned the eyes. It burned the throat. It was not. It was not the right celebratory beverage. <laughs> Did it stain the uh, clothing? Uh, you know, it added to the mystique a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna release that picture with because you'll see it come out. This the, the thing that's crazy is just kind of like fast forwarding through it. We we went up to New York. We competed in New York. Yeah. My my buddy was on chopped. <laughs> Which yeah. is cool, and he got yeah. chopped in the first episode. He did not claim his talent. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, yeah. the 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 uh, the judges were taking bites of Sandy muscles. Oh my god! Um, but but uh, the crazy thing is, is like I'm still friends with the guy that I had coffee with at that Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. And as the su success of the scene kind of just perpetuated, we didn't put a lot of energy into it, uh, like other than when we were doing it. Yeah. And uh, a dude came alongside me, Shane's brother, you yeah. know, Todd. Todd. And he said, man, I love what you guys are doing. And I just want to be a part of it. Yeah. I want to get in on the fun. He's like, I want to make a barbecue sauce. And I just thought, yeah, whatever, you know. Yeah. It's so the next thing I knew, we were in a test kitchen, we were cooking all these different sauces and we ended up making a sauce it went on the shelves yeah it was a cool run for a little while yeah 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 it's called mm -hmm. the holy smoke mm -hmm. and there's a local uh, uh hamburger place in town called phil's ice house it's legit we went over there and made a burger with them yeah and uh was on their menu for a while and yeah. uh man, it was so fun that's cool, cool dude and then that's, that's awesome the cold brew dude who started chameleon cold brew we ended up becoming friends and this is when it was it was when it was a small mom and pop. And we watched that thing grow. And yeah. man, he just recently sold it for quite a bit of money. That's a lot a lot of money, bro. Like um, a mean, lot of money. They're set for a, yeah. I mean their family's set yeah. for a long time. And it was just wild. Having yeah. sushi with him. Yeah. You know, he like bought us like the Chinese New Year. Like it was like this like dragon <laughs> celebrating on a plate. Like yeah. it was delicious. Yeah. It was way expensive. Yeah. But just him sharing his heart of like yeah. We've often, saying what we meant in his yeah, life was totally yeah, yeah we've we've often said that you know a lot of people that have been successful and you've helped you've helped them get there yeah, so why would i that's whatever dude um so let's keep going. yeah sorry i told you i can't no, that's work good, that, was dude, that, was, that was good that's good so <clears throat> i know that um i mean so there's a couple of things too i mean a few things that we can talk about um, but you have also walked through some of the lowest times, correct? Yeah. I mean, losing your brother yeah. is, is mm -hmm. one that I think me, you, and Jay have had this conversation 
probably specifically you and Jay as well. Uh, you guys had that in common. Yeah. Um, and and I know you shared some some parts of it with me about grief whenever my job transitioned, which I, to this day I still think is probably some of the best advice that you've ever given me or mm -hmm. I've ever heard. But and I'll share that here in a second. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, the loss of your brother. I mean, what was that? You, would you say that's the lowest of lows you've been at, or? Is, uh, yeah. I mean, and what did you learn, or what? Yeah. What? I mean, Man, that, that, it's interesting because it wasn't like just one moment. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was a lot of moments. Yeah, some of the stuff you shared. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, he. I mean, I always looked up to him. He's my yeah. big bro, and he was three and a half years older than me. Mm -hmm. But he was like larger than life. I mean, he was big. He was a big, yeah. tall dude. You know, he, I think when he died, he was like six four, six five. Oh wow! You know, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, big, big dude. And um, so it was like I always grew up kind of <laughs> not getting to win anything that we got to do together. Yeah. Like no yeah. matter what we did. Yeah. It, until it got serious where I may have started winning, he just would overpower me and just be over at that point. <laughs> so, like, driveway basketball, yeah, 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 never yeah. got a dub in all the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, so I totally looked up to him. Yeah. I mean, cause it, just because he was just that big dude. Yeah. And then when we got in high school, he started just running with the wrong people. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where it started off with trying something at a party you know, mm -hmm. or at an early age to per, like just getting harder, a harder core yeah. along the way. Mm -hmm. Like it just started off with just like a drink. Yeah. And it turned into different drinks and turned into the hard drinks. And it just, one, you know, some dude I remember flipped his cigarette out his window of his car. And the first time my brother ever smoked a cigarette, he picked up that cigarette and puffed off that it. cigarette. Yeah. You know, and we were yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, that turned into other things. And so, he, we were in Austin. He got a home out like over by Lake Travis, but it was yeah. like, you know, more of a rougher, double wide kind of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And man, once he got out there, it just, he got into meth. Yeah. And that began this like 12 year death. Mm -hmm. So, like, being in the lowest of lows, I mean, there were times where, man, I'd call him and he would just be in a total paranoid, schizophrenic, yeah. delusional. Like not making yeah. any sense. Yeah. And so you do all the things to try to, to fix it mm -hmm. or to try to cure it or to try to control it. And that's part of like what hurts the family, you mm -hmm. know, because so many it affects so yeah. many people. Yeah. And so I mean, yeah, it was there were a lot of low moments of taking him to the hospital. I took him, I went and took him to the hospital one time and having a doctor look at you when you're, you know, eighteen years old saying yeah. if you didn't bring him here, you would have yeah. died. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and then eventually he got uh, uh, diagnosed with diabetes. Yeah. And then he was also still using methamphetamines and he was insulin dependent. And so yeah. when you're, you can't think straight, yeah. straight up, like yeah, no doubt. totally, you can't even take care of yourself. He, he eventually went into a diabetic coma and yeah. died. Man, dude. Because he was also high on meth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, that just, again, some of the things that we, you and I are, I mean, we, the thing we have in common is teaching teens and I mean, not just teens, but people. And I think one of the biggest things is the people you run with and the people that you, you're, it, it, before you know it, you're, you turn around and you go, man, I'm, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And it's one, you're one decision away from, uh, you know, not seeing it and other people can. And I know you and I've always talked about who you're running with and, uh, show me, I mean, as dumb as I hate saying it or sound is show me your friends I'll show you the future yeah and it's and, but it's true because you and I've said that plenty of times and then the people that we've known that have been affected by that it's pretty crazy man and so how old were you when you passed away man let's see that was probably 30 okay they're 34 34 34 You're 34 okay yeah. and you and I are what two years apart mm -hmm. 34 yeah. okay man dude and uh, yeah well, that's, that's so you were saying that so one I remember one day golly and it, the, this was the craziest thing this, this is so shit. crazy this is when like one day I was like going about my business in the office and I just like oh yeah got, I like, that. struck by like grief 
Yeah. That's ambushed. Yeah. Ambushed by grief. That's what it's called. It's being ambushed by grief or a wave of grief. And like I didn't even see it coming. I didn't even know it was gonna I happen. remember asking then, you. Okay? Like I was just like crying. Like, dude, what the heck, dude? Yeah. What is going on? And you were like, I'm sure in the offices you guys were like, yeah, something's wrong with John today. <laughs> <laughs> and I you remember, came in yeah. and talked to me, and I just was uh, like sharing with you. I don't know why, but here's the craziest part: is on. I didn't even know it. But that it was, was on that. It was a. It was like a, his death birthday. I don't even know how to say. Yeah, it, 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 it was, was like totally years after his death. Of his death. Of his death. death. Yeah. On the day. Yeah, because I remember. I was writing completely that down. like not even yeah. consciously aware of that. Yeah, and I remember writing that down because you and I had that conversation, and from that day on, I was like, yeah, just to check in with you whenever that day comes around. But yeah, dude, I think I think um, so that wave of grief and a total transition from what we're talking about as far as death and grief. But whenever um, I stepped down from what nine, ten years of youth ministry, and I mean that was that that was even more of a uh, that was a doorbell. That was uh, the day that we we're in staff meeting, and you came along. It was your first staff meeting, and uh, Shane, uh, our boss, was like, "Hey, a sharp turn." Yeah, it was. Hold on, we'll talk about. It. Let's just let's just keep going because he said, "Hey, this is John Evans." And uh, he's on staff. And I looked across at the table, and you did this Sammy Sosa, kissed your heart and your <laughs> lips, and then pointed at me. And then Shane goes, What was that? And I looked at you and I go, Hey, man, I don't know what the heck you just did. <laughs> and you go, And he Shane goes, That's some kind of youth pastor talk. I was like, No, I have no idea what that is. It's and like, like hey, hey, I know, you, hey, dude, come on, we're both like in the same. Yeah, and I told everybody in front of everybody on that staff, I said, I have no idea what he just did. <laughs> and everybody was like laughing. Um, but, anyways, I was stepping down from youth ministry, and you said something that, man, has stuck with me, and I still to this day even pass it on. So you, you, I think people can learn from this. So if you haven't learned anything so far between be, between me and John, what we're saying, <laughs> I think this is the most vital thing that I've learned with grief was uh, that you told me, okay, so I'm stepping down from student ministry. We went, we, we used to be in a school. We went to, we, we had it in our house. We were at a building and multiple buildings. And you said, hey man, you know, one of the things you should do is go by to those places and just recall what happened there. And just, re, and just, just, give those things away because now you're stepping forward you're releasing those things and in grief you can do the same thing but i thought that was probably the most genius thing yeah. that i've heard even to this day is to go <clears throat> when when you're letting go of something not just a person but also a, a calling something that you're moving forward with yeah. um i think that's that's genius well i mean i wish i could take credit for it i was challenged to do the same thing i was changing jobs and i I was struggling with it a little bit, same as you, very similar yeah. to you. I was stepping away from doing students at my first church, mm -hmm. and I, I was kind of hitting a wall where I thought, man, this is, might be time for me to quit doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, this life coach <laughs> pulled me aside. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And he said, hey, what you should do is just to take, take a minute and just create some margin here. And yeah. a good way you can do that. <laughs> Stop Go ahead. A good way you can do that is just get your journal out. Yeah. Think of like the high points and the low points and the mm -hmm. places. And go yeah. to the places, and when you're there, like to think about what in your environment. If it's like a job mm -hmm. and you're transitioning through a job, or it's mm -hmm. at like in a, in a home, or some, like maybe you need to make a transition somehow from yeah. uh, like yeah, to yeah. an apartment or to a different place, or yeah. maybe things got bad with your roommates, like. Just take a minute, sit in those spaces, get by those places, and just start writing down the highs and lows. But then, like, celebrate the highs. Yeah. But between the both, both of them, then just you know, you could do a celebratory, like crumple up the paper and throw it in your back of the fire. Yeah. But let 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 go of those things. Yeah. And your mourning, you're letting go, like doing some cleaning some house. Yeah. And when you mourn that, it makes space for the new things that are going to come up, good and bad. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and so that way it's not just all. No, yeah, you're right. It's like a brain dump, but also a heart dump, like in on this paper, writing all this stuff down. <laughs> uh, we, you and I cannot say anything serious because yeah, we right. take it somewhere else. I don't know how, how the heart dump is going to go over with the audience. That's okay. It's going to be the title of the episode. Heart dump. Heart dumps with John Wolf Ranch. <laughs> Brought to you by Wolf Ranch. Um, <laughs> no, but even if you think about a breakup, I mean, like people breaking up, I mean, there's some people going through some tough stuff I mean go through that but write it down is the key because you got to get it it's out. great for a breakup man yeah. like that would be a good great space to do that yeah um, 
Cool, man. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of stuff. We're, we're almost going on an hour, which is wild because, um, yeah, I'm trying to think through what we're going to do. She would have shut this down. She would have been asleep on that table yeah. right there. But um, you and I, uh, we, I'm just trying to think through some of the things that people probably don't know about. I think go back and watch some of our videos. So we we called you comment John the common denominator of douchebag Evans. We went to lunch one day and Daniel, remember Daniel? Shout out to Daniel from yeah, oh, uh, yeah. from Round Rock. I was like, hey, you're the douchebag. Yeah, common denominator. Like, yeah. yeah. We've been sitting there for a while. And he goes, wait a minute, you're DBJ. And I was like, who's that? John douchebag Evans. And I was like, yeah, that's Jen. You're like, yeah, that's me. Sorry to let you down. And then this past week we're at Slab. Yeah. You and I are having lunch. Uh -huh. One of our buddies, Dan, knew we got to come up with a nickname for Dan. Dan comes in and he brings his buddies, and they he the guy just look. I don't even know the guy. You never met. We're sitting. Never, met, we, never met the people. He walks in, he points at you, and he goes, "I've seen you before." Oh, you're bang bang. You're bang bang. And I was like, "Oh my!" I didn't God. even react to him. I didn't even look him in the eye. I just looked at you and started laughing. I was like, "Really?" <laughs> Dude, you're a popular guy on this podcast. I don't I think this is a popular podcast. I'm just borrowing, I'm just riding your coattails. No, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, bang, bang, Evans. Um, yeah, dude, some of the things we've gotten into are pretty crazy. And yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, in our office, when I, when I was there full time, um, I felt sorry <laughs> for anybody in that office because no one would get work done. They always looked at us like, what are y'all doing? Um, <laughs> Yeah. Some of the, the the art to work hard, play hard. There you go. And the one time that Jaden Farnsworth, the redhead that I talked about on here, that can't, she could not control her temper. She would always show on her face what oh, she was feeling, yeah. right? And uh, there's a couple of things that we can go on right here. Maybe yeah. we should just have some fun with some memories yeah. real quick. The first one was when we tried to record a like a 20 second promo for what you and I were doing. And it took like three hours because <laughs> you and I could not yeah. stop. We just we got the giggles. Yeah, we just couldn't. And then the, somebody was shooting a gun in the distance, and they moved it in. And then we moved it inside, and we couldn't. The other day we watched that dude. The outtakes are hilarious. And then I the thought end, you were gonna bring up. At the end, you were eating uh, <laughs> pears, watching it or something like <laughs> chopping on the pears. I thought uh, you when you were saying shit and temper that you I, I pointed the out green. the broccoli in Oh my gosh, guys, check this out. We're gonna go uh, on the. Um, we're gonna go. What do you call it? The memory, memory, memory lane. Memory lane. So we're in the office. I can't even remember what happened. I don't either. We were we were filming her on Instagram, and oh, you zoomed oh, in. Oh, you zoomed in on the broccoli. There's like the a tea. crown of broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even just like one little thing. That, no. It was, it was like, like broccoli. So you've ever had something to eat yeah. on the toilet? You need to go look in the mirror. And you yeah. go, what the frick are wrong with these guys? I thought they were my friends. Well, she's sitting there, and then you show her. And dude, to this day, I don't think she's ever been that she mad. She grabbed her jacket, slammed the door, and her left. Just went, ah. and then, yeah, like, she left. She, and we were like, uh, I, like, I think she's mad. Off, I think when well, yeah. I posted the crown of broccoli in her teeth, it's <laughs> right court. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Okay. Noted. Don't yeah. do that again. Jane, sorry. Sorry about that, Jane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Should have handed you a toothpick instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just little things, man, that we do to keep people on their toes. I mean, there's. Uh, yeah, we can't release all the. Yeah. This. The, the, uh, so this will be episode ninety nine, not hundred. It's not worthy of hundred. No. Maybe ninety eight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anything? Any, well, I got a couple more questions that are just things yeah, we ask yeah. everybody. That's good. Anything else that you uh, that you can think of that we can discuss that we were like, man, what the heck were we thinking? We've seen lightning um, strike. Right so so I mean, there was a that we did see that. <laughs> the lightning struck so close, I could feel it in the fillings of my teeth. What it hit, I was like, ah! Like, you, you ran at me while I had the camera. Yeah, I, I ran away. Yeah, because I, did, I thought I got zapped by a. I didn't even know what happened. It happened so quick. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I was yeah. thinking, um, it was recently, over the holidays, we were. We were doing a big church-wide uh, Mr. Rogers theme. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe you're gonna bring this up. Really? And so, so this was like weeks. I'd say at least three weeks or two weeks of someone putting together a foam, uh, 
Trolley. Trolley. Yeah. Mr. Rogers Trolley. Like a it float. Looked, it was like a high school like homecoming float, but it looked like a, it was a steroids. trolley. It was I a mean, it was, looked like Mr. Rogers Trolley. It is legally, you can legally take this down the street because it had a license plate. Cruising everything. it around, giving people rides. So we were given the task, can you go get this you trolley, pick up the trolley bring it back. and bring it from one yeah, location no to the other? No problem. So just like I always do, anytime I'm with John, I turn on my camera because we never know what's going to happen. John and I pull up, we we lock and load the uh, trailer, and you put it in drive. And there was an overhang. There was an overhang. Like a, like a covered forgot. parking area. I completely forgot. And I didn't really feel anything. I, I just heard, heard the crunch heard of, of every piece of foam. Of the styrofoam crunching. Yes. And I stopped, I looked at you, I immediately knew <laughs> hours of people's hard work. Was put to was, crap. Was just crumbled in one And I two. looked at you and you just you had this blank like uh, like a dying inside, inside I was. Right? I couldn't I was in a situation I laughing in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> I felt like I was in big trouble. <laughs> it was like it was like getting in a wreck. It was like, oh crap, that just happened. <laughs> Exactly. So then we park, put it in park, <laughs> we walk around the back. And we back it up and it's just snowing like oh. styrofoam on us. Yeah. yeah. And then I go ahead and get on my phone and record what just We're happened. driving down the road and styrofoam's just, just floating away. Everywhere. We're messing with Texas, yep. we shouldn't have been doing that. Yep. Yep. We're going 40 miles an hour on a 70 mile an hour. Everybody's honking at us. Yeah. It that was, was a messy. The, the trolley bell was ringing. Ringing. Just yeah. to, like. You took off the top. I can still said. hear that. Like, every once in a while. <laughs> I hear the cra crackling of the phone. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. hitting that thing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's that story. Yeah. Countless stories, bro. Um, and what about the story? What about the story of the music playing while I'm in the restroom trying to stop? <laughs> <laughs> so we were having a leadership retreat. Leadership, leadership, oh because this is Mario's all about leadership. And, and this will be so, the last story. This is the last story. And so we were meeting in one area, but it was like not even. It had like screens. It was like it was like a backyard porch where we yeah. were gathering. So all our people were on, on the backyard porch, porch. porch, like a porch. Yeah, and we decided to walk. Maybe Mario about needed 15 to use the restroom, which was very thoughtful to go use one in a different facility. Fifteen yards away, <laughs> not even that far. You could throw a rock. You could throw a rock and yeah. hit it. So, so we walk fifteen we go yards there. away. You go to the restroom, but the sound system's there. So I hook it up to my phone. <laughs> And I turn it up as loud as it'll go. And I, but here's the thing about this place that you, you just started, you hooked your phone up to. There's outdoor speakers, there's indoor speakers, and then there's restroom speakers. And it was on blast. And I queued up a song that was not I safe for work. <laughs> you can <could> say. <laughs> not safe for the leadership And conference. I was like, I'm thinking in my mind, he's in the bathroom just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was running out. Literally, you know, the bathroom. Pulling my pants. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. You you weren't even. <laughs> you were running out, pulling your pants up, saying, "Dude, dude, stop!" I was like, "What? You're, this isn't funny to you?" And I was the like, windows are open, the speakers are on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then we had to walk back and like ask the questions without <laughs> saying, "Yeah, did y'all hear that, that song? That weird song I'm playing?" They were like, "No." I was like, "Bro, so, dude, yeah, we got to." Yeah, and the hard part about that was the the stall that I was in. <laughs> it was like made for extra small people. So when I when I opened the stall, it shut on me, and I was stuck in the stall. <laughs> you came running out so fast. Yeah, you know, I was like, bro, turn that crap off. I thought something terrible had happened. <laughs> the Wolf Brand Chili. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, moving on because we gotta we gotta we gotta get moving. Yeah. So have we gotten anywhere though? I don't know. Okay. Um, this is probably. <laughs> Episode 49 will be the best. Yeah, we're going on an hour. We're about to have to break. Um, so, dude, let's say you're backstage. They say, hey, here's John Bang Bang Evans. He's wrestling The Undertaker tonight. Oh, man. What song is your entrance song? Man, that's a, that's a, I know yours is Understand Man. Understand Man? <laughs> understand Man. <laughs> enter, enter Sandman, bro. Under, enter. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> if you're thinking to, like, you are, you're about to walk down this, that yeah, to go fight really The Undertaker. Fun. I mean, I want to say something that's going to hype you up. I mean, you oh, know, like, uh, Bomb Track by Red Chance Machine would yeah, be a rage. Big one. rage. Thunder by yeah. ACDC is also, man, that's a classic. Yeah. I'll take either one of those any oh, yeah. week. 
What about Stevie Wonder? He's, <laughs> the dude, he's a good songwriter. John, John loves Stevie Wonder. Yeah, dude. A he's little a bit of guy. Paul Abdul, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> John can imitate them highly. You, do, you also do voices, bro. Of okay. Some of our best friends. In the moment. Yeah. Some of our best yeah. friends. Oh, yeah. don't know that you can intimidate them. Im imitate them pretty right. well. That's right. That's um, right. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Episode ninety eight is gonna be a good one. Yep. Um, <laughs> so top top five movies. Um, man, I love that movie Big with Tom Hanks oh, yeah. in it. I yeah. just love that movie. Mm -hmm. Like that, I could watch that movie all the time. Okay. Um, like whenever oh Napoleon Dynamite, Nacho Libre, and classics. Go. I can watch those any day of the week. Yeah. And my kids love them, and it's just mm -hmm. funny. Um. Now, I thought those Lord of the Rings movies were pretty epic. So um, weird. I'm I, I've, never, story, I've never watched those. They're really to this good, day. Dude. Okay. They're really Lord good. Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. I mean. Okay. One more. Find you LARPing in the park. I don't know what that is, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Um, <clears throat> I, want to, I want to pick like an 80s movie. I'm trying to think of the one. Mannequins. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go Goonies, man. Goonies, okay. An adventure. Space, yeah. Spaceballs. Yeah, those are good. Right. That's okay. good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Best concert that you've seen? Because I know you're a big music guy. Best concert. Oh, man, <clears throat> man, that's a good one. I've been to that um, Austin City Limits a couple of times. Like, yeah. like, well, I've been to the festival a couple of times. Yeah. But I went to those recordings. Yeah, yeah those, that's awesome. That's man. High, like, yeah, those high are sweet quality experience. Because yep. you're getting like this the studio experience of the recording for the TV show, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. But then you get like an epic concert experience. It sounds great. It looks yeah. great. All of those were good. That's what it's made for. So yeah, that's that's what I like. If you go there, you're gonna get. I'm it. telling you that that um, <coughs> Moody Theater, mm -hmm. that that one downtown is where they record. Yeah. The Austin City. If you ever get a chance to go there and catch a show there, it, it kind of ruins you though. Yeah, like you because it's perfect. Else. Yep. Saw Cody Johnson there with mm -hmm. my wife, and we one time I won tickets to go see, man, what's an Australian country? country? Keith Urban. Keith Urban, he's one of my favorites. So Keith he had put on a crazy man. show we got to go to. <laughs> he's a good guy. He was singing in the crowd right in front of us. Like I could have just like, you know. Played his guitar. Yeah, strummed a few chords. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, cool, dude. What? Okay, so I mean, these are just questions we ask everyone. Um, Leadership, man, what would you say it is to find? So that was, you know, we didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about leadership. Maybe we did, but um, so when I signed up for a class in college, and this is, I think, what really stood out to me about my dad is, and I took this class in college, and it just solidified things for me. It's called um, uh, Servant Leadership. Mm -hmm. There's a biblical foundations class that I took, and I think that, it's it's focused on the needs of others. It's yeah. looking to help meet the needs of others and not seeking self. Yeah. And so <clears throat> that's always been something that has just drawn me toward that style of leadership is looking not to my benefit, but to how I can benefit others. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I think that that's just how I roll, for mm -hmm. better or for worse. I think that a lot of times I'll put others before myself, or I look to do that or look to the needs of okay what's better for the, the group than mm -hmm. for myself or i don't I'm, they're not here for me i'm here for them yeah so it's like a bottom look it's not like a, a pyramid where i'm looking down yeah, like, yeah. i'm saying yeah. i'm pyramid where you're, I'm looking you're up serving them yeah <clears throat> to try to say okay where where are things would it where do people need encouragement yeah. or what tools do they need understanding clarity um but Man, yeah, and I, I think even over the years hanging with you, man, I think there's a lot of leadership principles that I've learned through what you've learned. Yeah. And, you know, definitely just leading through influence is, is something that challenges me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the things you and I have talked about, uh, listening to Jocko, you know, sharing that stuff with you. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, any last, uh, any last statements before? We wrap this up. Yeah, man. I, th I think last statements keep going, keep doing what you're doing. I think there's people who are listening that are learning from this, me being one of them. And man, I'm excited to see what's going to continue through what you're doing. Yeah, you're doing some yeah. cool things. It's crazy to look at, you know, since the first episode and even yeah. before that to now. You know, yeah. it's like you're taking things step by step, yeah. but you're making progress. And each one of those steps, man, is is building more toward what 
No doubt, man. Point, bro. Yeah, maybe we can get Jay on a podcast with the both of us. Me, you, and Jay. Yeah, that'll, that'll be episode 100. Yeah, that'll, 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 <laughs> that, that that'll break 100. the internet um, <laughs> because of the smell. Yeah, I think so. We could all have a celebratory Wolf Brand chili, like just bowl of Wolf Brand. Dude, just what if we did that? that? What if you got a can of Wolf Brand chili, <laughs> said cheers, and just drank yeah, it? Yeah, chase it down with a Jocko Go discipline. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say that, I mean, I shared this with Jay. Uh, I think one of the most funniest moments was when Jay and I text you and your son had your phone. <laughs> and you slapped the phone out of his hand and said, do not look I was, at it. My, I, my kids ask for my phone a lot. My youngest son asked for my phone and he's in the back and, and he said, Jay, Ma Mario texted you and I just smacked the phone out of his hand. <laughs> Because you know, you never know. I mean, you know, yeah. there's a lot you of work jail, out there. Or jail yeah, send Jay's a dangerous guy to yeah. get a text from. I think one of the worst text pictures that you ever sent me and Jay. Were you the one that sent the jar full of toenails? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was the most disgusting <laughs> picture I'd ever seen, bro. That was me. Yeah, okay. Well They were yeah. mine. They, they were, <laughs> those were a Googled I Google. Don't Google That's this. Worse. Please don't Google this. Jar of toenails, mm -hmm. images. Click images, yeah. and then I sent it to you guys. Yeah. With any so, context. Yeah, we we yeah we send each other some interesting <laughs> things. But guys, uh, John, man, thanks for thanks for joining us, dude. Uh, I, more so just out of the friendship and some of the things that we've learned. I know <clears throat> my wife can attest to this that you know if it wasn't for you and Jay, uh, we went through some tough times. You know, I mean, even as an organization. Uh, <clears throat> just some of the financial struggles and burdens that we went through. Uh, and that, I mean, we, we've shared that before. It's no uh, secret that, you know, we, we struggled, but we learned a lot. We stuck together. I think because of you guys, it was, it's been an easier, uh, I think definitely easier life for my family, just because of the, 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 <laughs> the joy that you guys bring me um, <laughs> at the expense of each other. Uh, yeah. But um yeah, man, I appreciate your friendship, dude. Yeah, Love you, man, and uh, I'm glad that you got to uh, to be on here. Yeah, hopefully, it entertained <laughs> a few people. I hope so. Or maybe they so. heard something that inspired them. I will tell people though that there are there is a, a, a document here that's called Johnisms right here. Uh, that if if for the right price, it would be released. And then also on my phone, at least I think I think it was over 400 pictures so that are hidden specifically with you and Jay. Yeah. And uh, to this day, you said you'll never run for political office because of <laughs> this point with what's out there. <laughs> it's not out there yet. Well, I mean, it's out there. If if I would, yeah. There. there was one time last week that you did something to me. I said, John, on the hour, every hour, this is going to be a picture, a picture released. Or you, hold, a you hold the power. <laughs> <laughs> I respect your power, um, position of power. Dude, I don't want to. I don't want to end this because remember the gerbil and hamster conversation. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I. I. Oh, the other thing. <laughs> I said, John, I said, okay. Okay. For time. Yeah, but, but I was here. John, Turn it off. John leaves his laptop on <laughs> in our office, <laughs> and I just sneak over there, and I. Uh, <laughs> update I, my Facebook status without you know, yeah on my behalf yeah and it's probably gotten the most traction on your Facebook yeah the hijack Facebook posts that you do get more likes and comments of just like everyday posts of your kids there. yeah like things that matter to me <laughs> <laughs> like which is great and you've had people reach out to you from high school that you've never oh seen. yeah sharing all kinds of personal uh, information yeah personal hygiene tips yeah that, Concern, legitimate <laughs> concerns because of your post. Like, yeah. yeah, anyways, we had go. some lost relationships. You guys, uh, John, thanks for joining us, dude. Seriously, you guys go follow John. He's on Instagram and uh, Facebook, the Facebook, and he is an amazing fisherman. <clears throat> you guys want to go check him out. You can also follow the Evans crew, the Evans dot crew, Evans dot crew. Just pictures of my kids fishing, right but now. that's cool. awesome, man. Yeah, you guys get some gear for fishing. So, if you ever want to fish, maybe John can give you a tour here yeah. in Austin. Tips. Tips and tours with Bang Bang. That's uh, tips <laughs> Bang Bang. Uh, but anyways, guys, honestly, thank you guys for listening. We have a couple <clears throat> more uh, great interviews this month coming up. Um, it, 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 again, I wish I could tell you. I just want to surprise you with the two just because um, we're getting ready for those. Uh, also, uh, be on the lookout for more of the Lowdown. It's been great. Uh, look out for some more gear looking into the new year. We're getting ready for 2022. 
Hope you guys are preparing well for Christmas, but um, yeah, follow us on social is one of the biggest things that I just continue to ask you guys. Would you just rate us on wherever you hear your podcast and continue to share this. Appreciate you guys. Um, John, again, thanks for yeah. joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and just uh, remember you exist for more. You're here to offer more. Don't ever give up. Every single one of us is made for more. Later. Nice, bro. Anything for you, Oh, my gosh. What'd you say? Is there anything for you, too? Oh, my bad. I always forget, bro. <laughs> like, sometimes I start yelling yeah. things. Yeah. And, oh, crap. YouTube. Um, there's John. John, you got any last <laughs> words for YouTube? Yeah. You want to show them the bullet, bro? Oh, yeah. Right there. Business in the front. Are in the back. back. Have you, and you've done two funerals. Or, wait. I did a funeral. You did a funeral. We did baptism, and we got one tomorrow. So, with the mullet. Right here. Discipline go. Whoop assault. Whoop assault. Watermelon. It's good. Thank you. Later, guys.